We're going to talk a little bit about the development board that I uh, that I created. The uh, first version of this thing was um, on a breadboard, but eh. Actually, I, at one point I thought I needed this breadboard for something, but I still haven't gotten around to doing whatever it was that I wanted this breadboard for. But in any event, created a little um, test bed. Um, the ESP8266 um, needs to um, have a few pins that are connected to either pull-ups or to um, pull-downs and depending on whether you've pulled a pin high or low you can set it into different modes so there's a reset pin you pull I forget which one I think it's GPI was zero you pull that low and it'll reset or if you have um, one of the pins pulled high and then reset, it puts it into programming mode, which allows you to send programming information to it through this um, USB to FTDI interface uh, chip. Now, that could be, you know, uh, FTDI interface cable, or you can get one of these, one of these little spark fun jobbies. Um, and I mean, you get them by the uh, by the dozens for ten bucks out of uh, out of China as well. FTDI two thirty two. I think that was two bucks. Anyways, the Spark Phone one works really well. So uh, so yeah, uh, there is a um, a project on GitHub for uh, ESP eighty two sixty six board support in the Arduino uh, development environment. So their IDE can have different boards um, uh, added to it. So um, check uh, Arduino ESP8266 on the GitHub. I'll put a link down in the description so you can take a look at that. Um, these are 3.3 volt devices. So I've got an LM317 uh, 3.3 volt voltage regulator. allows you to plug in any um, any reasonable power supply. I think these go up to about 25 volts. So anywhere between 5 and 25 volts will give you um, appropriate amount of power. Although these things do provide, do consume a fair amount of power when they're running as a as a hotspot. So I think they're like, um, I want to say like almost almost 400 milliamps. So nearly half an amp of current draw uh, at peak. So mm, they're not they're not super efficient, but I mean, compared to a Wi-Fi um, hotspot hub, which is usually needs a, a full amp of, uh, of power, you can get by with less. Um, but when they go into sleep mode, they consume something ridiculously small, like, uh, like 23 milliamps. So it's when you can actually get them into a, a very power um, friendly state. And then there's an internal timer that runs on the uh, low power state. So you could wake these guys up um, on a regular basis and, you know, provide a hotspot or, you know, wake, wake these guys up. It will connect to a hotspot, figure it that way as well, to send data um, out and then put it back to sleep. Lots of things you can do with these. These are really cool little chips. Um, about the about the same amount of memory as a standard Arduino, but comes with Wi-Fi, fewer um, GPIOs, and um, th that can be a limitation, depending. But they're three bucks, so price performance is is pretty good on on these little jobbies. There was a uh, there was a Kickstarter. Digispark, um, I think, made a um, a board. Um, Node MC has a Lua version that they sell in a nice little development board uh, layout. So check these guys out. They're kind of fun little toys to play with. Um, and when you compare it to an Arduino and a fifty dollar Wi-Fi shield for an Arduino. And, this is three bucks. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty sweet deal. As long as you aren't limited by your I/O and you're not limited by the amount of memory that you have available to you for for um, for flashing. So yeah, 
Um, a few of the peripheral, peripherals it supports is um, SPI. It also supports I2C. Um, there's a half a dozen GPIO pins. There is also an ADC in here. Um, the this little guy supports the um, the AVR uh, math library. Um, there is a uh, lots of things that this this can can be used for, um, especially at the price. I'd be aware of wary of anything. Any any little device now could be a Wi-Fi hotspot. So cool. Anyways. That's a little bit about this guy. Like I said um, before, what we've got running here is a Wi-Fi hotspot with some code that is reading um, you know, the standard Arduino programming um, style. You've got a setup, then you've got a loop that runs, and in the loop, what we're doing is we're constantly sampling the position, angular position from these angular position sensors, converting that into um, what are called ticks, which is what Sky Safari understands. So the the way it, um, it understands a circle, there's so many ticks in a circle, arbitrary, not related to degrees or anything, just arbitrary ticks. So we convert the angle position coming from here, it reads it out in degrees, uh, and convert that into ticks, send it off to Sky Safari. So every time through the loop, we read each sensor, um, store its value. We do a little bit of um, little bit of smoothing on the data inside of the code, and then anytime the um, Sky Safari sends us a, then we ask, is there any um, data that we're being asked for? If Sky Safari sends us a request for data, it will send back the um, current best value that it has after smoothing from both position sensors, and then keeps on going through its loop and keeps on updating the position. Sky Safari only sends um, requests 10 a second. So what is that? Um, very, uh, you know, very slow. Sky Safari sends um, 10 requests a second. Um, this um, is running, uh, the sensing of the angle, angle, angular position is happening at, um, at the, uh, at the frequency of the main loop, except for when it's got to do some uh, communications through TCAP IP. But other than that, it's, um, it's constantly updating those sensors, so it's getting a very accurate or very uh, stable position information. So yeah, that's, um, that's this little guy here. Now, these. These are AS5048s that I put into this little, uh, this holder. Those are Hal Effect um, angular position sensors. I think I mentioned that they, they provide 14 bits of resolution for 360 degree rotations. They have some ridiculously fast cycle time. Um, I think they operate at like, well, I'll have to check, but um, I remember there not being an issue at all with the uh, with the speed at which they could update. So basically, you've got a little magnet here, diametrically what they call it, diametrically magnetized. So rather than having a north pole on the face and a south pole on the other face, you have a north pole on one edge and the south pole on the other edge. So the magnetic field lines look like this, not like this. Um, so you've got this defined north-south axis on this magnet. You line the axis up with the center of the chip, roughly. For best linearity, you want to be within a half a millimeter of the center of the chip, but it looks like it tolerates more than that. I haven't quite done enough testing to figure out what um, what nonlinearity I'm experiencing from misalignment between the axis of the the axis is perpendicular to the magnetic axis and axis and the center of the chip but I can do some testing later but basically you'll mount the magnet in something that rotates 
mount this on something that's fixed, and then as this rotates, it will read the position of the magnet in and report it back in degrees when queried via SPI. This chip implements a bunch of um, other features. You can get things like uh, the uh, there, whether or not there was an error in reading a command. You can also get some information about the magnitude of the magnetic field, and you can use that to do some tuning of the position of the uh, magnet above the sensor. But I haven't implemented any of those yet. Um, so there will there'll be another video where I show you how these are mounted on the telescope. But um, yeah, that's, uh, that's these guys in a nutshell. One for each axis. So that's an overview of the system. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.